Warning, the video you're about to watch contains con confidential information. By no means should you tell your other professors that I taught you how to do all of this. They'll get very upset with me, and then I won't have any friends. So when I was growing up, I used to watch this incredible show. Um, it was hosted by a guy named LeVar Burton, and it was called Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow was essentially like a show where they would read stories uh, to you, but then the, the stories would be sort of animated and there'd be graphics and stuff. And it was really cool. It was a wonderfully like wholesome, awesome show. But the greatest part about Reading Rainbow was actually the theme song. Love that theme song. Take a look, it's in a book, reading rainbow. Mm, so great. All right, take a look, it's in a book. You know what that means? That means that we have to have a video about how to read books. This is kind of the follow-up uh, video to the Thomas video in which I talked about how to analyze secondary sources, but specifically articles and essays. In this video, I'm going to give you strategies for Thomasing much bigger things, right? Books. We're gonna organize our video in kind of three main sections. First, I'm going to talk you through a concept that I've borrowed from Anthony Brundage called X-raying. I'm gonna lead you through kind of what X-raying a book means and why it's useful. Second, I'm gonna to talk to you about book reviews. It's a little bit of a controversial topic, but I'm gonna lead you through why I think looking at book reviews can be really, really important. Then finally, I'm gonna end with my strategies for Thomasing books, right? How do you get the topic, historiography, organization, method, argument, and significance of something that's 300 or 400 pages long? That's the last part of this video. Okay, without further ado, let's get it. Okay, first things first, let's check out this concept of X-ray. You're probably thinking to yourself, what challenges are there for reading books? I've read plenty of books over the course of my life and I haven't struggled at all. Sure, that's fine, but there's reading and then there's reading. Let's start with the first challenge. For your historiographic projects, you're gonna need to make your way through a lot of books, a whole lot of books. How do you read all of these books in just a matter of a few weeks? And here's the second problem. Not all books are alike. The books that you'll be reading for this project are academic monographs written by professors and other professional historians. I've made my way through a 400 page long Harry Potter novel in a matter of days. That's quick reading, but academic monographs, oof, not so easy. And that's the thing. You don't read an academic monograph the same way that you read a Harry Potter novel. With Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, you just pick it up, turn to page one and dig in. There's nothing more complicated than that. With academic monographs, you have to be much, much more strategic. That's because what you're doing with academic monographs is less reading and more dissecting. Remember what I said about reading journal articles last week? The same basic principle applies. You're reading in order to determine certain bits of information and to categorize certain things in the book. And those things are the things that we talked about vis-a-vis -vis the Thomas acronym. Wait. Did somebody just say Thomas? You know what that means. Topic, historiography and organization. Method and argument, significance too. Topic, historiography and organization. 
Method and argument and significance too. Right, this is the point. When you read an academic monograph, what you're after is the same thing that you're after when you read academic articles. You want to determine a book's topic, historiography, organization, method, argument, and significance. And once you've determined these things, you've accomplished the goal of reading the book, at least for the purposes of writing a historiographic essay, which is your ultimate goal here. So the real question is, how do you efficiently and effectively determine the Thomas of an academic monograph? What do we mean by x-raying a book? This basically means just checking out the basic structure of the book by scanning key areas. The point of x-raying is that in a mere matter of moments, you can get an idea of some of the most important elements of Thomas. How does it work? Well, the first step is to just look at the title and the subtitle of the book. Historians tend to be pretty pragmatic people. Although they often look for ways to give their books catchy titles, the reality is that they all know that the title and subtitle have work to do in presenting what the topic is about. To be honest, it's usually the subtitle that does the heavy lifting here. Let's look at some examples from the books that are always behind me when I record these videos. Uh, how about, for example, Jeffrey Parker's Global Crisis, War, Climate Change, and Catastrophe in the 17th Century? Right, right from the get-go, we can tell a few important things about the book. We can tell the when of the book, the 17th century. We can get a sense of the where, global crisis. So it's a history of the whole globe, a world history. We can even get a sense of the what, war and catastrophe. So it's about crises, right? Social, military, and political crises. Finally, we even get a hint of the methodology of the book. Parker's book is partly about climate change, which suggests he's using the methods and perspectives of environmental history in his analysis. How about another one? How about Christy Picicero's The Military Enlightenment, War and Culture in the French Empire from Louis XIV to Napoleon? What have we found out just by looking at the title and subtitle? It's military history. It's about France and its empire. It's set in the period from roughly the late 17th to the early 19th centuries. It's about war and culture of the Enlightenment. You see, you can get a lot from just an initial glance at the title and subtitle of a book. The second aspect of x-raying a book, do a quick search for the author and her or his background. If the person's alive and a current professor, they'll usually have a bio page that you can check out that lists other publications and their educational backgrounds and even sometimes a brief write-up about the person. There's a lot of value in this practice. First, it helps you find additional sources for your project. Second, it often tells you a bit about the methodological perspective of the historian. Lots of historians identify as having been influenced by certain varieties of history, and they put this on their websites. Without even reading the book, you can often get a sense of what the methodology is. You may even get a historian who details what she or he thinks the significance of the book is on her or his website. That stuff is gold. The final step of x-raying is to look at the table of contents. Again, you can get a lot from the table of contents. The main thing that you can often see is the organization of the book. If a book is chronologically organized, that's usually pretty clear from just looking at the chapter titles. Similarly, if it's thematically organized, you can often see that by looking at what topics are referenced in the various chapters. The structure of the book is there in the table of contents, and it always makes some sort of sense. Figuring out how and why a historian organized a book the way that she or he did helps you know how to effectively analyze it. So if you're lucky, x-raying a book can get you the topic, the methodology, or at least part of it, and maybe even some of the significance of the book. It's a pretty good haul for five minutes of your time. So, step one is just to x-ray the book. That's pretty easy. You don't have to worry much about that. So, next step is... Wait a second. I said x-ray the book. The book. Not me. The book. Okay, the time has come. Let's check out book reviews. Okay, what I want to take you through now is how to find a book review. Book reviews are incredibly useful for you in these projects. They're great tools for you to use to quickly get a sense of what a book is about and what some of the main Thomas elements are of that book. But first, you have to learn how to find them. So to show you how to find one, we're going to use an example of a book by another historian, the same historian who came up with the Thomas model, Dana Agman. 
Uh, she has a book named A Colonial Affair, and I'm going to use that as the example to show you how to find reviews of that book. So how I usually do this, honestly, is just start with the library's homepage. And in one search, you can usually find not only the book itself, but things written about the book. So book reviews. And the way that I do it generally is just to put in the author's last name and the title. So here it would be Agman and A Colonial Affair. When you hit go, one search starts working and it gives you a list of results. And here you can see, right, at the very top is the book itself, which you can access in an online version, an ebook version um, through the website. But if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see that they also include articles in which the title of the article is the book. That's a key for you to know that it's a book review that's being linked there. Another way you can know is just by looking at who the author of the article is. If it's not the same person as the author of the book, then you know it's a person writing about the book in some way. And finally, you can tell where that book review is published. Um, book reviews are always published in academic journals, or more often than not, they're published in academic journals. So you can look right here and you can see that this book review was published in the, Ac the American Historical Review, one of the major academic journals in the historical profession. There's another one right below it, right? Published in the Journal of Early Modern History. So really, it's as easy as just searching for the book, looking down for articles written about the book, and then if you're signed into Baylor, which I really hope I am right now, you can usually just click on download PDF, and it should, after a little bit of thinking and a little bit of time, bring you to a scan of the book review. So if you scroll down right here, here is the book review of Dana Eggman's book. And you'll see that most book reviews tend to be about a page in length. So this one starts right here on page 1443, and it goes through 1444, and then ends just on the top of 1445. And in this one plus page, you'll get a great sense of what the book is about, what the book's argument is, sometimes what the book's methodology is, what the book's significance is for a historiographical debate. Book reviews are incredibly useful. And if you know how to find them, it's something that you should do for every single book that you find for your project. All right, so we know about X-raying books. We know about how to find and how to use book reviews. So now let's dig into the books themselves, right? How do we get Thomas from academic monographs? To understand this, I think it's important to think of our Thomas model again. No, no, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to play the song again. Seriously, here's the acronym, though, and the things that we're looking for, right? We're looking for the topic, the historiography, the organization, the method, the argument, and the significance. And if you think about it, and as you already may have realized, you can find these various elements in very specific parts of the book. For example, if you're looking for the topic, you can probably figure out what it is by looking first at the title and then by reading the introduction. If you've read the introduction and you still don't know what the book's topic is, well, <laughs> then I would hasten to say that the book's introduction is probably not really well written. Or maybe you fell asleep while reading. I don't know. But look at the other elements, too. Where do you find the historiographical debate? Well, most of the time, historians will talk about the debate that they're engaging with in the introduction and often reconnect with it in the conclusion. You also find out a lot about the specific historians that the author is debating in the notes. That's where the author is going to cite certain books and articles and essays. For the organization, again, you can get a lot of that just by x-raying the table of contents. The way to the organization rests in the chapters themselves, but usually authors will give you a sense of the organization in the introduction of the book. Indeed, lots of introductions tend to end with a section where the author lays out the whole structure of the book and its argument. What about methodology? If you haven't already gotten it from the title, subtitle, or the research you did on the author, then you'll probably see it discussed in the introduction. If you're searching for what an author's primary sources are, right, that's a part of knowing what the methodology is, then just look in the notes, in the bibliography. They're always cited there. Any work of professional history has citations that show you what sources the person is using to build their argument. Speaking of argument, where is the argument? Well, the short answer is everywhere, but you'll find it concentrated in a few places. First, in the introduction, you'll always get a book's central thesis, and often an articulation of its main reasons. 
The bulk of the argument, however, will show up in the book's various chapters. This is where you have to go to and do a lot of digging to find out what the main reasons and evidence are. And finally, the significance. Significance tends to be the main focus of a book's conclusion. Sometimes an author will point to it early in the introduction too, but the conclusion is really where you get authors talking about what they think they've accomplished in the book and why they think it matters. Okay, so that's the basic structure. But notice something very, very important. Look at how many times the introduction shows up in our Thomas rubric. This is pretty significant. <laughs> it means that simply by reading a book's introduction, you can get a ton of what you need to get for your analysis. After the introduction, you're like 80% of the way there. This is how you read an academic book. You invest a ton of energy into the introduction because after the introduction, you'll have a great sense of what the book is trying to do and how it's trying to do it. For the other 20%, it takes a little bit of work. This is when you have to get your hands dirty and really read through the book in order to understand it. But let me give you a few quick tips and ways to do this quickly and efficiently. First, make sure that you review what you learned from x-raying the table of contents. If you've already gathered the basic organization of the book from looking at the table of contents, then you'll have an easier time placing each individual chapter into the wider scope of the book. If you know, for example, that the first chapter is going to be background, then you know when you read it that you're not looking for specific reasons that support the book's central thesis. Second, know your sources from your core sources. What I mean here is that for the purpose of a historiographic project, not all sources are alike. Some books do more for a historiographical debate than others. What this means is that you should spend the most time with the books that are core sources, the ones that other historians constantly reference and argue with. Those are the ones that you're going to need to know and write about the most. For the other books, be a little quicker. Spend a little less time on them. Get a general sense of what's going on in the book rather than a detailed page-by-page -page sort of analysis. This will save you time and energy. Finally, the best way to read the chapters of a book is to hit the beginnings and ends of each chapter. Just like the book as a whole, the introduction and conclusion of each chapter packs a lot of punch. It's where you get a sense of what the chapter is arguing and what the significance of that chapter is to the rest of the argument. If the chapter has sections, then it's all the easier. Read the first and last sections. If you don't know what the chapter is about after that, then dig a little bit deeper. But most of the time, you'll get the basics of what each chapter is from just doing that. Now listen, this is a good way to ruin a story. I'd never recommend you read a Harry Potter novel like this. But if your purpose is dissection, which is very much the purpose of, of what the type of reading you're going to do for this class and for this project, then this method will often do the trick. Okay, so that's my general strategy for reading academic monographs. But really, we should be clear here. Uh, this isn't reading, right? You're not reading a book when you do the things that I just talked about. Instead, you're sort of dissecting a book. But that's a really important skill to have, especially for um, when you need to analyze historiographies, right? When you need to kind of come to an understanding of a historiographical debate. To do that quickly and to do that efficiently, you need to be able to dissect books. And these are some of the strategies that you can use for dissecting books. And dissecting books is a really important part of doing historical research because you're going to have to talk about historiography. You're going to have to talk about what his other historians have said. And books are really the main kind of currency of academic debates, at least in the discipline of history. So when we think about historiography, more often than not, we're thinking about essentially what people have said in books. So make sure you use these strategies going forward, um, especially as you work through the kind of historiographies on your topics. Knowing how to read a book really quickly and efficiently is going to allow you to speak to the main debates that are central to what historians have said on your topic. All right, that's it. Good job. See you in class.